Welcome to Strato Income. We're here to help you make money. Today is Wednesday, December 9th, 2020. Today, let's talk about the market overall performance. And let's discuss some of the trades that I made today. And we'll finish off the session, the video session today by looking at what potentially can happen tomorrow, which is a big day. So coming back to the market, what you're seeing right now is the QQQ NASDAQ index. So let's zoom out a little bit. The overall QQQ index, as we can see from the daily chart, has really been an moving up in a slow but definitely progressing up kind of trend. Really, the first trend started around, actually, it really started around the, the election. After the election, it just drifting up and there was a little bit of slowing down because of Thanksgiving. But then afterwards, it just keep going up and then stop you know, every day to day sequences. So you can see this kind of pullback is very healthy for the market. So I wouldn't worry too much about the overall health of the market. As you can see, it's still above the moving average line, the 18 day moving average line and definitely the 200 day moving average line. And if you look at the volume of that sell off, it's actually very moderate compared to the previous sell off where we had around the election time and uh, the couple of two days. So it is a normal healthy pullback in my opinion. But tomorrow, let's watch it closely. I wouldn't be surprised if there's another kind of pullback or as actually flattening out from this point out until the end of the year. The market has definitely been in a much huge bullish uptrend run for the last couple of days and weeks. So let's zoom in a little bit to today's performance actually. What are you looking at here is the, day, uh, the 30 minute chart so let's look at the, the today's performance. So from Wednesday morning, when the first started, it's actually in a very healthy trend, you know, kind of extension to what happened yesterday in the last couple of days moving up. But then really around 11.30, it started to slow down and selling off. People are speculate, were speculating what could it really be the cause, you know, whether it's a stimulus package, and uh, or it could be uh, uh, the vaccines or it could be something else. But there wasn't any confirmed news at this point. Really, it's at this point, from my point of view, it's a healthy pullback to really slow down the heat in the market for a couple of days. So what you're seeing here is around 1130 uh, Eastern Coast time. That's when the things are actually started to uh, drift down. So that's the overall market performance. And then now let's look at the, uh, the trade that I made today. So I actually made a, quite a lot of trades this morning um, compared to the last couple of days. It's definitely one of the um, very busy day for, the, for, for me personally. So what are you seeing are some of the trades from bottom up, you know, I'll go through them um, one by one. You know, first couple I went talked about, I want to talk about is the Tesla trade. Tesla has definitely been on my radar for the last couple of days. It just keep, it was just keep going up for the last couple of days. You know, I really wanted to see if there's actually an opportunity where I can pull back. But, you know, at 7.30 in the morning, it, the Tesla was still moving up. It was around 620. And I decided to make a, a option trade by selling some of the put option and with the protection for the expiration date around February 19. Overall, those two trades combined will give me 800 bucks if Tesla stays above the 550 by the time it, those are option trades are expired on February 19th. For some of you guys here are not very familiar with this strategy, this is really called a bull put uh, strategies and I can uh, demonstrate how to actually execute it in the next session, in the future sessions. I did a similar trade for Fastly. Fastly actually, if you look at the Fastly chart, 
Fastly has been one of the top performer yesterday, especially it really jumped up because the fact that there was a potential deals with Apple to provide some kind of service. But you know that's really pump up the Fastly, and as you, some of you guys know, Fastly is one of the uh, big service provider for TikTok. And uh, when the Trump administration was banning the ban, uh, was um, banning the TikTok, Fastly was hit. Um, it was pretty bad. And now uh, with the transition to the new administration. You know, Fastly came back and the news that they were going to work with something out with Apple really pump up the stock. But that deal, if you look at the overall size, I think it was like around 40 million. It's really a smaller size compared to the overall market cap of the company. So I think it was an overreaction and I decided to act on that based on, you know, the Fastly, you know, the rumor. Um, so today I actually made a trade Similarly to uh, the Tesla trade, I did a bull post spread on the Fastly as well. I did a one around the closer to January 8th for about $140 credit for the Fastly trade. Now let's talk about the PLTR. PLTR, there were a couple of trades that I did for PLTR. First, I closed one of the PLTR put. I, I had a TPLTR port at the price of $20 um, for uh, the premium of 120. So I decided to close it up before the market sell off, which is a good thing. Um, we take uh, buying back at $30. So I can potentially take about 90% of the profit back. Then I went on and then um, sold another PLTR at the price of 25 for the premium of uh, $313. So some of you are not very familiar with the option trade, you know, tra uh, trade with caution, caution. And um, I have to repeat, none of this is actually recommendation, it's really for education, learning, and uh, um, purposes. So trade with your, uh, do your research first before you actually make any trade. So the PLTR is uh, what I did was I selling the put at $25 for the $313 premium. So PRTR is a, for some of you don't know, PRTR is a company that provides um, data analysis services for government and commercials. I can go and talk about a company um, in detail in the next uh, session, but uh, the PRTR has been one of the huge, you know, buzzed stock. A lot of people are talking about because, you know, the fact is so volatile you can see if we put on a daily chart and it will zoom out a little bit. When the first IPO, it was around $10, $12 and it then just kept on going up. And I think around $33, it actually had a pullback and a pull, you know, right now you can see the support is around $20. So that's where I actually did it, my first put selling the $20 put. And then I closed it today um, taking the profit. Now I'm actually anticipating the next support level for that is around 25. And uh, we will see how it's going to play out until the expiration date. So I did that. And then for the PLTR for January 15, and I also did a couple selling couple uh, calls for the uh, Disney um, Expedia and uh, Space. So really my mindset here is I have a call on those positions previously. So I don't wanna go through every single one. Let's just talk about Disney then. So if you look at Disney, I had a Disney call a couple of weeks ago where I bought it for about $50 and um, the call strike price is around 185. That's when they first announced the vaccine and uh, with the anticipation that Disney Park is going to open and in, on top of the fact that they have the Disney Plus streaming service, which is doing incredibly well. So with that being said, I actually wanted to buy a car back then. But, you know, at fast forward, Disney has been slowly inching up, but really nothing is breaking out. So today I decided to um, sell another call on top of it to make a spread. 
really the purpose is, you know, why by selling the two uh, call at a much farther out of the money, 195, you know, taking the profit of $33, I can cover my initial investment about a hundred bucks. So, you know, I still leave about $40 on the table, but, you know, get, making sure I can initial investment back. That's what you can do with a lot of the stock. You can buy a call first, and when the stock actually goes up and uh, we can sell another car with the fact that, you know, there's a anticipated momentum for go, keep going up. So that's called a lagging um, for some of you guys not um, familiar with the term. So I did a couple of those for both Disney, Expedia and the space. Space is one of the um, company that, no, I bought a car way back then when, I think when the, uh, when SpaceX launched their uh, ast astronauts to the space, I bought a, a car back then for space, you know, the SPCE. It's for Virgin Galactica company. Back then the price was 171. Now you can see the last couple of days, all the space, you know, um, stocks, they're, they're moving up and I decided to sell, want to make sure I get in my initial premium back, 171 back by selling the car here at 180. That mean, what does it mean? It means that I get all my initial investment back and I can enjoy if the space hitting to any of the, uh, the price between 35 to 50, I will take the profit and my profit gain will be capped if space hit above $50 by the time it expires. So just let me repeat that. Basically, I get my investment back by selling the call. That's number one. Number two, by selling a further out of the money call, I still can enjoy the profit when the space goes up between uh, 35 and 50. Only the limitation of doing such a strategy is only when the space hits above 50. In the case I didn't have the a sell, uh, $50, $50 car that I didn't sell, I would have made much more money. But now I have this, it basically caps my limitation on the profit side. So that's what I did. You know, this is going back to my old logic, getting your initial investment back and then enjoy the profit along the way. So some of those, I also, you know, I closed my test, uh, SC uh, trade that I did it before, another bull post spread, I closed it. And I think I take 40% of the, um, uh, I, take, I took over 60% of the profit and left 40% of the money on the table just to be safe. Um, and then last but not least, I also were um, looking into potentially purchasing the IPO stock AI. For some of you who don't know, AI is one of the stock IPO today along with DoorDash. So let's look at the chart of the AI. When the first IPO, let's put into a 30 minute. You know, I, I think it IPO around 108 with a premium. Initial IPO price was about $80, $60. I'm not, I don't quite follow, but when the first IPO early in the morning at 30, it went above to 109 and then kept going up 115. I think I purchased the, the AI around when the first pullback to around 100. So I bought one share just to get myself into the, the door and then they kind of drift down a little bit and just stop right here around $92.49. So that's one of the things when you are not quite sure about the IPO price, you can, you know, I really recommend take a, a step back and then see how it plays out. Um, it, don't rush in, but you know, for the AI, I was I did a little bit of research about the company, about the founder and the teams. Um, I think there's a potential. That's why I decided to make a move. And there was a lot of volume when I first started trading. So those are some good signs. Last but not least, I did a QQQ. You know, when the market was pulling back, I sold a bull post spread um, for QQQ. So just to recap, you know, these are the trades that I did. And some of the lesson learns, you know, if you wanted to talk about this, 
I probably could, could have waited a little bit for those bull post spread, you know, for the Fastly and the Tesla when they actually pulled back. So for example, if you look at the Tesla, I think the trade I did was way early in the morning when Tesla is around 620. But then if we, I were to sell the Tesla at around 587, and then um, I would really, you know, make really getting a lot of the premium back if I were to do that. But you can never time the market. Um, sometimes you just have to take a step forward and then just move on. So probably one of the better strategies rather than doing all those at the same time, maybe just doing one at a time and then uh, observe the market. Um, so that's pretty much what I did today. And then let's talk about what can potentially happen tomorrow. Tomorrow, Airbnb is going to IPO. It's a big deal. Airbnb was pricing about, I think there's $20 additional pricing on the premium. So it's an IPO stock, a lot of hypes, and I'll be looking closely on the Airbnb. Um, also, I will look at, at the PLTRs to see if there's any opportunity for me to get in to the PLTR and along with the Fastly. I actually wanted to buy some additional stocks for both PLTR and the Fastly. So we'll, I will monitor closely today and uh, we'll talk about um, those trades tomorrow um, in this video, tomorrow's video. So with that being said, hope this is helpful and I'll see you tomorrow.